Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So a large number of months, actually probably about two years or so ago, I did a review of the Esun Pet G filament. It was a reddish maroon color. And um, I really fell in love with this filament over the months and now years that I've been printing with it. And so recently I actually purchased some Inland Pet G filament, which uh, according to the internet, the Inland is the uh, lesser expensive, lesser quality of the Esong filament. And so I just wanted to do a quick review of the Inland Pet G and then maybe compare and contrast that to the uh, Esong Pet G. So I printed a number of things here. I actually started off with some calibration cubes, which I have right here in front of me. Uh, these guys, uh, these are the 20 millimeter calibration cubes from Maker's Muse, and it turns out that they're pretty, pretty close to the 20 millimeters. I printed the cubes with 0.95, 1.0, and 1.05 extrusion percentage, just to see if it had any influence on the overall dimensions of the cubes. So the output of printing the cubes wasn't terribly unexpected, quite honestly. So they all printed relatively smaller than what I would have expected. None of them printed at 20 millimeters exactly. They all printed slightly under that. So the 0.95 cube actually, stand by, uh, printed at, one side was 19.67, uh, the other side was 19.63. So significantly under by about 0.3 millimeters or so. The 1.0 extrusion width printed at 19.75 and 19.70, uh, 710. So again, slightly larger as you would expect, slightly more extrusion, but slightly, uh, but still smaller than what uh, I would want if it was a 20 millimeter cube. And then the uh, 1.05 cube uh, percentage uh, printed at 19.8 and 19.85. So again, getting closer to the to the 20 millimeter. A nominal print that it was supposed to be but not quite exactly what uh, you would expect for the print now I was wondering to myself well why would that be so I've printed uh, again I think you saw my uh, videos I'll, I'll link them up here so the eSun was under extruding quite uh, quite a lot and that was for two primary reasons I was able to determine that as the Prusa itself was under extruding and then the filament was slightly less than a nominal tolerance on the thickness so uh, I took the, the roll here and I actually uh, measured the filament and it, it indeed ranges somewhere between point, uh, 1.72 and 1.74 uh, depending on where I was looking, 1.71, 1.74, something like this. So it, it's a little bit smaller than 1.75 you'd expect. So I would expect you'd have to over extrude a little bit to get this to print at the size you're looking for. So. I also ran a couple additional tests. Um, I printed this, uh, so in the CNC world, there's this, uh, uh, what is known as the circle diamond square test. Test your machine to make sure that it is it is uh, square and true and is printing, um, I'm sorry, cutting for the CNC, cutting in the proper dimensions. So I actually printed this guy here. Let's see, I will zoom in a little bit, uh, see if you guys can see this. So uh, the, it is what you would expect. It is a circle, diamond, and a square. And I marked the sides here. Let me rotate that there. Uh, that I was, I guess it would be this way for you all. Uh, I marked the sides that I was measuring just so I knew what I was getting there. So the, uh, let me switch back over this guy. So the the circle itself, or the square here, was 37.5 uh, millimeters. The Diamond, which is also square, just turned, right, uh, is 26.517 millimeters. And then the circled outer diameter here is uh, 20 millimeters, and the inner diameter is 10 millimeters. So this actually came pretty close. Um, hopefully you guys can still see that there. So I'm going to put that down, focus in here. So uh, again, the results were about the same. Generally speaking, the filament was under uh, under printing. Now I printed this. Um, model at 1.0 extrusion just uh, to get some baseline. So the uh, the yellow inland pet G printed roughly about 0.2 millimeters, anywhere from uh, uh, 0.05 to 0.2 millimeters difference in what the actual should be. 
And so the outside diameter here, or the I guess the outside dimension of the square, uh, I, I measured it kind of in the middle here, uh, so that uh, if there was any elephant toe or elephant foot on here, that it wouldn't affect it. And then the same I did with the with the diamond edge, and then the circle edge, and then the inside diameter. I also did not measure in the bottom just in case. And so the results were pretty consistent, uh, quite honestly. The outside dimension of the square right here was ranged between 0.24 and 0.27 millimeters difference. The diamond dimensions here measured anywhere from 0 .8, 0 0.187 to 0.177, which is a little bit better than, than the outside. I'm not entirely sure why that would be the case. The circle diameter here ranged more wild, uh, had more variance than the squares, and I'll talk about that in a minute why, but it was uh, anywhere from 0.1 to 0.23 millimeters in variance. And then the inside diameter is actually the closest to all. Uh, the, the largest it was was 0.05, and the smallest it was was 0.04. So again, and generally speaking, they all printed uh, smaller than you would expect. Now, why did the circle print a little bit uh, at a much greater variance than you would want? Is there was a retraction right around one of the edges here. I can't really feel it right now, but it created this little ridge uh, on the circle and, and great, created a much, much greater uh, tolerance than you would expect. Uh, likewise, on the corners here, all four of the corners are rounded over. So if you were to measure, uh, and including the uh, clamping it down in the quarters, it would be a little bit larger than it actually was in the center here. So uh, that's okay. Uh, you just need to know that if you print with this, uh, generally speaking, it has not a lot to do with the filament. This is more about the printer where it's rounding over these corners. So uh, these tests, uh, they turned out kind of what I was expecting. I'm kind of used to things printing a little slightly undersized. So to compare and contrast, the PET GI printed the diamond circle square test in regular PLA. This happens to be inland black PLA. I do have other PLAs. I did not try the Maker Geeks or the Maker Geeks Raptor PLA, which I also have in black. But uh, so this turned out relatively close to the PET G. Uh, pulling up the results here, the inland black PLA. Uh, on the outside diameter here was uh, anywhere between point uh, three, uh, 37.29, 37.36 versus the PET G, which is 37.26 and 37.23. So it, it was slightly larger than the PET G, which um, I Googled this and uh, according to everything I read, the Petchy's not supposed to shrink, but uh, they were both printed at 1% uh, or 1.0 extrusion uh, percentage. So they should have printed within close to each other. Uh, kind of consistently across the board, this PLA printed just slightly larger by about 0.1 millimeters than the Petchy. So, you know, 0.1 millimeters, quite honestly, is not a whole lot of uh, space, <laughs> um, you know, in, in tenths of an inch, it's about a thousandth of an inch, right, roughly. Um, so you, you just got to know that, that at least my printer, and it'll wear very bit by your printer, so you should run some of these tests on your own. My printer prints a little bit small, and I am going to uh, run through some additional calibrations, which I'll make a video about later. So. Uh, Beyond that, I did print, um, I have this uh, hose adapter that I printed. Yeah, let's see if I can focus in on it. I, I created this in Fusion 360. Uh, all it is, is, let me if I rotate this way, there you go. So you can see here, I have the hose from a shop vac uh, that connects to my CNC. <laughs> uh, they're slightly different uh, widths here. Uh, you can see the ridge in the middle where that I created right there. Uh, Right, that, that holds the different hose things there. So that, that turned out pretty well. And I also printed this uh, pumpkin because it was Halloween, right? Uh, it, it turned out very well as, as well. I will tell you the bottom here, I'll zoom in. You can see the lines here. These are not from the print bed. These are um, the infill that did not attach properly. So it got a little sketchy around these edges here. I was printing uh, too fast. Uh, and, but all you know, it, it recovered if you want to look at it that way, and it ended up printing, and it, it looks fantastic. I like the way that it looks. It's got that nice little sheen to it. You can sort of see through it, so it looks fantastic. So, so what have I learned about this filament? 
Well, the width of the filament itself is a little smaller than the specification. So instead of being 1.75 millimeters, it was much, much closer to 1.72 or 1.73 on average. I also learned that uh, I normally print at 60 millimeters. Uh, this filament does require you to print a little bit slower, especially on the first layer or two. Uh, so I started printing at 40 millimeters overall for the print and that worked very very well I did try printing the uh, the overall print at 60 millimeters and then printing the first layer at 50% Which would be roughly around 30 millimeters and that worked pretty well as well I would tell you that the first couple later layers probably need to be printed uh, at a, a slower rate than the rest of the print uh, as evidenced by the pumpkin there but overall printed very very well if you print at 40 millimeters um, so if size is not an issue or if you can compensate for the size definitely I think this is a little bit more to do with my printer than the filament itself uh, overall it printed uh, you know smaller than the PLA and I think it, the, that has something to do with the fact that the filament itself is a little bit uh, not as thick as you would want it to be but overall it's a great filament uh, it's very strong it has great adhesion I use it for things that I want strength with like the connector for the uh, you know the, the the vacuum to the CNC so overall I think the filament is a good value it's about $15 for the spool from uh, Micro Center or I got it online at Amazon that's about what I paid for it uh, you know compared to the eSun I feel like the eSun was easier to print with now I did print a different color sometimes it has something to do with the printability of it uh, I'll be honest with you, I tried printing it on a CR10. I was just just incapable of getting the PET G to stick to the CR10 uh, in all interest of, uh, you know, interest of disclosure. I didn't really try that hard. Uh, it didn't stick to the glue right off the bat, and I didn't really futz with the height of the, the nozzle too much. So I just uh, went straight over to the, uh, to the Prusa with the PEI bed and it stuck uh, just as you would expect with a little manipulation of the Z height there. So overall, I think it's a good filament. If you're looking for some PET-G, especially the crystal sort of uh, translucent here, it looks really, really great. Um, I do have a roll of the red to compare and contrast that to the eSun. Um, so that would kind of be a little bit more of a head-to-head -head comparison. But overall, I think it's good filament. It's definitely good value. And uh, that's about it. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, if you don't like it, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Please leave any questions or comments down below. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone.